the interaction with uh, with authors is uh, is energizing. It's energizing to talk about work that we have in common, even if we're writing very different types of books. Um, and the interaction with re with readers, uh, well, I mean, there's 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 nothing to compare to that. That's why you write book you you write a book. Maybe you feel like you have to write it. Um, oh, I have to write about this. But in the end, you're writing a book for somebody else to read, not just for yourself. And, and so to be in a place and to have interaction with people who maybe they haven't read my book yet, but hopefully they're going to read my book. Um, and they're reading other people's books. And so everybody comes together at a book festival. Um, and it's about books. Well, how many other, I'm trying to think, how many other venues are there where that's happening? Storytelling is one of the oldest ways that we get to communicate to our community and, and to the world. And so uh, I get to storytell, I get to play, I get to act uh, through storytelling. And uh, it's, it's such an important medium that we're kind of losing now with television and different things. It, not that it's bad, but uh, it's something about curling up with a really good book. Uh, I love iPads, but I love the turn of the page. I love the way the pages smell. And that's something that we're losing. And if I can be a part of keeping that alive, even if it's an iPad, I want to be a part of that. We Shall Overcome, the story of a song. This book tells the story of the anthem of the Civil Rights Movement. The story begins with the song's roots in America's era of slavery. It moves through emancipation and the Jim Crow period, reaches a crescendo in the Civil Rights era, and continues to be, and continues to be something that we look at every day and think about. In doing my research for the introduction, I fell in love with the words someone else used to describe the story, and I quote, but the story of We Shall Overcome isn't only about a song that has come to represent the struggle for equality, freedom, peace, and justice around the world. It's about how the act of singing and the process of sharing song are part of what defines us as human beings. <laughs> Let's let the train pass. I'm excited to introduce this book. As a longtime singer, I love to read about the history of songs. Debbie Levy says of herself, and I'm quoting, I write books, fiction, nonfiction, and poetry for people of all different ages and especially for young people. Before starting my career, I was a newspaper editor for American Lawyer Media and Legal Times. Before that, I was a lawyer with the Washington DC law firm of Wilmer, Cutler, and Pickering, now called Wilmer Hale. I have a bachelor's degree in government and foreign affairs from the University of Virginia and a law degree and master's degree in world politics from the University of Michigan. I live in Maryland with my husband, Rick Hoffman. We have two grown sons. Besides writing, I love to kayak, boat, and fish in the Chesapeake Bay region, swim, bowl duck pins, <laughs> tramp around the woods with the dog. <laughs> I only thought people in Baltimore did that. <laughs> Watch the cat sleep, and of course, she loves to read. Vanessa Brantley Newton grew up in a musical family who loves to sing. She is self-taught, she is a self-taught illustrator, doll maker, and crafter who studied fashion illustration at Fashion Institute of Technology in New York and children's books illustration at the School of Visual Arts in New York. She loves all things old and retro and finds it, um, and finds it way, finds a way into that finds its way into her illustrations and artwork. Her voice for writing is as simple and sweet as the voice of the she sings with. She is the author and illustrator of "Let Freedom Ring" and "Don't Let Auntie Mabel Bless the Table," and has illustrated numerous children's books, including "One Love and Every Little Thing," words by Bob and Sidella Marley, and presenting "Tallulah," written by Tori Spelling. Ms. Brantley Newton currently makes her nest in Charlotte, North Carolina with her husband of 20 years, their daughter, and a very rambunctious cat named Stripes. Please help me welcome to the dais Debbie Levy and Vanessa Brantley Newton.
Thank you for being here. Let's get right to it. We Shall Overcome, the story of a song. Why a whole book about one little song? Well, I frequently speak to young people, and so I see a few young people here and a few people who are formerly young people here. I'm gonna direct my, my comments um, to the younger comments common denominator. So for me, this book started not so much thinking about singing, although, Vanessa, I love to sing, I love music, but in thinking about fairness, or to be more exact, about unfairness. So, for example, what if you could not be in this tent today, just weren't allowed here because you wear glasses? What if that were the rule? What if you couldn't be in that tent today because no green, no green jackets allowed here today. I know saying it like that sounds silly, but not so long ago, right, in many parts of the country, including here in Maryland, if you were African American, you would not be served at a restaurant. I grew up in Silver Spring, so during hot summers in the 60s, if my parents wanted to take me over to Glen Echo to the public pool to swim, I could go to Glen Echo and swim. If my friend Vanessa lived here then, she couldn't go. She wasn't allowed in. And of course, we're not just talking about restaurants and swimming pools, but this type of unfairness, this type of injustice toward African Americans covered all aspects of life, important aspects of life, schools, jobs, public transportation, buses and trains, the good stuff reserved for the white people, the not good stuff over here for the black people. So if you were treated this unfairly, how might you feel, right? I mean, I know I would feel sad if I were in that position, but I'd also feel angry. And I can imagine even feeling so angry that I'd wanna fight. But fighting with your fist is not such a great idea. It doesn't, it's unlikely to get you what you want. You can hurt innocent people. Um, you'll get in trouble, so you could come up with another way of fighting, fighting with your brains. You could join with other people who also object to this type of unfairness and uh, you would march. You could write articles, make speeches, and you would quietly and firmly demand your rights. That's another way of fighting with your brains. And that is exactly what African Americans and other people, whites, browns, beiges, who wanted also to fight this type of unfairness, that's what they did. They fought with their brains. And we all know, of course, about the great leader who fought with his brain against this type of injustice, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And there were other leaders, but there were also so many regular people like us who fought this way, whose names are only known to themselves and to their family and to their friends. And there was another important way that people fought the injustice with their brains and not with weapons and fists. And do you know what that is? They opened their mouth and they sang. And you might think that singing is not much of a way to fight. But if you think about it, singing shows the world and shows the people that you're objecting to that you too are human, that you have a voice, that you are strong, and that you will be heard. And if in fact inside you're still feeling sad and maybe even scared because fighting with your brain is scary, fighting injustice is scary, singing, especially when you're singing together with other people, can lift you up, give you courage. Now, people weren't singing just any old song. They weren't singing happy birthday to you. They weren't singing zippity doo dah but you all already know the name of the song that they were singing, because it's the name of our book, We Shall Overcome. And now, I'd like to hear from Vanessa about this. It is indeed a pleasure to be here with all of you. And we are going to do a song, and hopefully we can have you join along with us if you know the song, all righty? I see a couple of people like, yes, okay. Good. All right, here we go. It is again indeed a pleasure to be here with you. And we're going to share this song in a different way. But the words still mean the same, and it's the same intent. We shall overcome.
We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. Back in slavery times when enslaved people worked long days with no pay and no say, no freedom, no fairness, no choice, no chance, the people sang. They suffered, yet they sang to soothe the hurt, to fight the cruelty, to declare that yes, they were human beings. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe I'll be all right someday. I'll overcome someday, I'll overcome someday. If in my heart I do not yield, I'll overcome someday. It took a war, the Civil War, to end slavery. But even after, white people treated black people as less than fully human, excluding them and ignoring them, blaming them and even attacking them, all because of the color of their skin. Black people were no longer slaves, it was true. But they were not truly free. Still they believed things would get better. Still they sang. We shall overcome. We will overcome. We will overcome someday. It wasn't easy to believe. It wasn't easy when white people shut out African Americans from good jobs and good pay, schools and libraries, neighborhoods, restaurants, hotels, bathrooms, train cars, bus seats playgrounds and parks, but black Americans with some white Americans did believe that they would overcome the unfairness, hate, and violence. They started to protest. They brought us church songs. I will overcome to the streets. But since they were marching and working together, they sang, we will overcome. We together will overcome. Oh, deep in my heart, I Someday. From the streets the song reached the ears of city people, country people, followers and leaders, it reached Martin Luther King, the most important leader, working for justice for African Americans. He took the song with him in his heart, everywhere he traveled. The words changed a little, but the spirit stayed the same. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome someday. Can you sing? Will you sing with us? We shall overcome, we shall overcome, we shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I, know that I do believe we shall overcome someday. You guys sound awesome. Vanessa and I, is this still on? <laughs> Vanessa and I, though we've worked on this book together for, oh, three years, are only meeting now this weekend. That's the way it is in children's books. We, we didn't even talk on the phone. We didn't have email exchange, and it's not because we knew we wouldn't like each other. <laughs> it's just the way it's done. So, since we're just meeting each other this weekend, we have some questions for each other, and you might as well listen in. Vanessa, my dear, 
When you first read the manuscript to this book, did you know what you wanted the pictures to be? Oh, absolutely. I, I'm a child of the 60s. So <laughs> I remember uh, some of the outfits that the different people wore, and that's what intrigued me. I'm a fashion illustrator. So immediately I was like, oh, yes, I know exactly what I'm going to do. And um, I just collected these ideas in my head, and I could not wait to get it on paper after I read the manuscript. So definitely. Now, for you, I'm going to ask. Yes. What inspired you? to do this book, to write this particular book? Well, I've written a number of books for young people, including picture books like this, but also for middle and high school students. So in doing books about, for example, Lyndon Johnson, I did a biography of Lyndon Johnson, a book about bigotry, mm -hmm. um, a book about slavery, uh, and some others, I encountered the idea of fighting with your brain. Mm. And moreover, I encountered, of course, I knew the song, We Shall Overcome, but I kept coming across little bitty snippets of fascinating information that I never knew about the song. And so it just grew year over year. You and I worked on the book for, say, two or three years, but I would say that I've been working on the book for eight or ten years. Okay. Vanessa. Yes. Hmm. Oh, I have so many questions for you. Mm -hmm. What was the hardest part of illustrating this book? Um, just going back through different things that happened uh, with the civil rights. I remember our family going on traveling trips and not being able to go to the Howard Johnson's and sit down. You know, so those types of things, you know, come back to mind. That was just the hardest part of it, was kind of reliving a little bit of what we went through. But the wonderful part was, and this is the part that I love now, is that you and I get to stand here in front of all these wonderful people a long time ago that would not have happened. And so we have overcome in, in a big way. We still got a long ways to go, but we, we, we've come a yeah. long, long way. So yeah. that is awesome. Much time, thank you for the time. Um, it's five after. I think we have a few more minutes. <laughs> no? Do we go to 11.15? 10.45, 11.15? She I know, mm -hmm. but I, I think she started <laughs> counting too soon. <laughs> Am I wrong? 11.05? Okay, so two minutes indeed. Okay. Uh, more, more, any questions from yes. you all? Any questions from? Please, somebody have a question. Yes, ma'am. So what led you from being a lawyer to turning to the creative life? <sighs> what turn, why did I go from being a lawyer to? 11.15. 11.15, okay, cool. Why you go from a lawyer to the more creative life? Well, I'd always wanted to write, and that actually led me to being a lawyer. Then after that, I went to be a newspaper editor, but I really wanted to write books, and I wanted to write for young people, so I don't have a, a single answer, just even when I was little, I wanted to write. Somewhere here today, I have books that I wrote when I was seven years old, and actually, a lot of times when I go into schools and I bring, you know, real books like this, uh, oh, which recently, I'm, I was supposed to say this, recently won the Jane Addams Peace Award honor. Yay! <laughs> but when I go into schools, what they really want to be looking at are the torn paper books that I made when I was seven. <laughs> Anybody else with a question? Uh, where, where are the original drums? Oh, the oh. illustrations. You know, I couldn't bring them with me. Uh, I work uh, uh, digitally uh, as well as um, traditionally. And so uh, just collecting different things. Uh, one, of the, one of the things we wanted to talk about was the medium that I use. Yeah. While it's digital, I still have to hand draw everything. And then it's collaged as well. So I have to collect different things, fabrics, all that kind of stuff. Uh, like I said, I'm a retro girl. So anything from the 60s or the 70s was stuck in there. <laughs> so I think uh, if there aren't more questions, and I are we still on a, oh, yes, mm -hmm. sir. Can you elaborate on what you said about Yeah. How did you originally connect and collaborate I'll, without any? So elaborate on the right on the process of how we how we connected. Well, um, I wrote the book and it got sold to the publisher Disney. Disney has an imprint called Jump at the Sun. Disney Jump at the Sun, and usually in children's book publishing, it's the publisher who chooses an illustrator because they know more illustrators than the authors do, and they might have an idea. It really is a collaborative process, even mm -hmm. though we never 
collaborated, mm -hmm. exactly. But the art director and the editor and even the publisher might have an idea of what they want the tone of the book to be. And so they, these people, sought out Vanessa and, and oh, gave yes. her the manuscript. And, you know, I, I'm sure there are collaborations where there is some more back and forth between artist and author. Um, but it just didn't happen in this case. It, mostly it happens in the late stages. If the author sees something that she thinks doesn't, you know, like is a mistake, or, um, well, that would be the only thing. And you know what, there's a good reason for this, because imagine if I'm telling Vanessa, you know what, the, the style here, I'm not liking this. Imagine if Vanessa were telling me, Debbie, I wish you'd use a couple different words from the words that you do use. So it sounds funny to people to begin with, but it actually, does make a lot of sense. And then when you do get together, it makes it all the more yes, sweet. It does. Yes, it does, absolutely, absolutely. Now, I, can I ask one more question? Because then I want to leave time for our little musical. We have a little musical thing be, as, we, as we leave you. This little girl on the cover, is she somebody you know? Of course. <laughs> I'm a people watcher. And so a lot of the uh, things that I get are from the people that I see. So you never know, you might end up in a book. I'm just saying. And how are we on time? Still OK? Any more questions? Then I'm going to ask one. How did you get into children's book illustrating? Somebody asked me how I went from being a lawyer to being a children's author. How'd you go from, you know what? I happen to know that Vanessa was a phlebotomist before, like you know, drawing blood out of your arms. And now you're children. What? <laughs> Uh, economics will do that to you. Um, <laughs> loss of job and uh, having a talent and really sitting on it and not doing anything with it. And I decided to put a portfolio together. A friend of mine came over. We were going to have a prayer meeting. <laughs> and we were going to pray. And she said, um, Vanessa, who did all this artwork? I said, me. And she said, Vanessa, I didn't know that you could draw. I've known you for eight years. Never knew you could draw. I said, well, you know, it's something that I do. And she goes, well, do you know who I work for? I said, no. She said, I work for Scholastic Books. I'm the editor. I have a magazine. She said, you're hired. I've been working ever since. <laughs> That's my story. I'm sticking to it. We want to happy you before you leave, so let's get ready to sing happy, OK? Here we go. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. Sunshine, she's here. You can take a break. I'm a hot air balloon that could go to space with the air like i don't care baby by the way ha. because i'm happy clap along if you feel like a room without a roof because I'm happy clap along if you know that happiness is the truth because I'm happy clap along if you know what happiness means to you Clap along if you feel like that's what you want to do. It come bad news talking this and that. Yeah. Well, give me all you got and don't hold it back. Yeah. I should probably warn you I'll be just fine. Yeah. No offense to you, don't waste your time. Here's why. Clap along if you feel like a room without a roof. Clap along if you know that happiness is the truth. Clap along if you know what happiness means to you. Bring me down, can't nothing. Bring me down, his love is too high to bring me down, can nothing. Bring me down. Bring me down, can nothing. Bring me down, his love is too high to bring me down. Can nothing, bring me down. Clap along if you feel like a room without a roof. Clap along if you know that happiness is the truth. Clap along if you know what happiness means to you. Clap along if you feel like that's what you want to do. 
clap along if you feel like a room without a roof. That's what you want to do. Okay, as you leave now, bring me down. Can nothing, you can exit. Bring me down. If love is too high to bring me down. Can nothing, bring me down. Clap along if you feel like a room without a roof. Clap along if you know that happiness is. What you want to do, don't forget to give book sign. Clap along if you feel like a room without a roof. Please pay for it first. Clap along if you feel happiness is the truth. Politics and Pros Bookstore Ted. If you know what happiness means to you. Clap along if you feel like that's what you want to do. Have a good day. And thank you so much for coming.